Hey YouTube. I got a I was looking in the in the storage where I have all my lumber stacked, the good stuff, and I found this piece of white oak in there. It's uh thirteen and a half inches wide. So I decided I'm gonna use this white oak to make another bench. I'll make a little bit of a fancier bench. And um I'll talk to you about some stuff that I heard or I read, I mean, on the comments a little bit, just to go over a couple little things. So I'm going to start marking this thing off to make a bench. I'm not sure what size I should make. Um, this is for one person, basically, although two people could sit on it. I guess I'll make one a little longer than that one. And then I'll do some routering on this and figure out some kind of fancy set of legs. Anyway, um, I had gotten a comment this morning and this is not to pick, or it's not that somebody got to me, but as a, having been a teacher, you hear a lot of misconceptions about things. And I um, just want to clear this up so this fellow can make sure he's on the right track. He said that he knows a guy who can cut a tree and have the pith in one board. Well, I don't know what the complexity would be of that uh, depending upon how the tree is bent but I just want to show you something and he also said that this guy knows what's inside of a tree before he cuts the bark let me show you this this white pine that's sitting in front of me here is about 18, 18 inches across and I've been nursing this thing as best I can and you can see it's beautiful. It's as straight as can be. It's up there. I don't know. I would say it's about 45 or 50 feet tall. So I'm nursing this thing along because I want this to to uh, cut into boards later. But here's the thing. Not long ago, right where you see that, probably three years ago, I hit that tree with the stabilizer on the backhoe. Now you can see how the bark is curling around itself and it's going to heal itself okay it's going to heal itself but no matter what this mark or some form of it is going to stay in this tree now here's the other thing up here higher when i was digging the footer for the bat for the uh, uh, garage which the garage is right there up higher with the boom the top of my boom scratch the same kind of a nick into the tree when I first moved here that tree was eight inches in diameter okay and it's grown considerably added 10 inches in the past couple years uh, what is it I think we're here 16 years or whatever but anyway it's added a lot to its uh, thickness now up there in this area right here I hit that tree with the boom of tobacco right now for all intents and purposes no one could see what's in there. Now, apparently the guys met Superman and his x-ray vision was able to look through the tree. Now the rest of us, like me, who does make some mistakes and I don't have x-ray vision, I could not tell you that that is going to be in there unless I remembered that I hit the tree up there, okay? So I do remember hitting it and I know that the bottom first log here is going to have some issues when I go to cut it up. That's the only way I can know that. All right? I cannot know what some other tree is going to do. Like for instance this uh, maple that's sitting here. I've been trying to nurse this maple too but you can see i got a road going right by it. And I've bumped it a couple of times with the backhoe bucket and stuff. Looks like something hit there, although it could have been a branch. Branch came off there. It's trying to keep itself going. There is no way that I can look at a tree and tell you what's inside of there. I can't even tell you if the pith is running through the center of the tree, and neither can anybody else. We assume that that's what's happening because 90% of the time that's what you see. The pith is in the center of the tree. But I've had trees that the pith is not in the center. So we'll take a look up here at this log pile and see if we have anything like that. Because to say that you can put the pith in the middle in a in one board when you cut, why not? 
All you gotta do is look at it, determine if the tree's bent, set the pith in the center, and if you cut a big enough board, if, if you cut a two inch board, you could probably get the pith in the center. But just check this out. This one here, the pith sort of looks like it's in the center. I would call that centered, okay? Let's come over here. Look at this piece of hemlock. That, or not hemlock, white pine. That pith is not in the center of that log. It's off to one side and high a little bit. All right. Here's another piece of maple. This maple, the pith, is not in the center of that log. It's off to one side. White pine, white pine, white pine. Let me back up a little bit here. White pine, white pine, white pine. Pretty much they're in the center. The gray ones are cherry. Um, pretty much in the center. Here's one here. Take a look at this tree. Look down the tree. Okay, the center of this tree is roughly where my finger is. That pith is nowhere near center. Okay? So, all I'm saying is, unless you cut the tree open and start looking for stuff, how do you know that there's something there or not there? So, I appreciate that, you know, maybe someone has seen someone do something by accident and they feel that this is a master at work when in reality no one can tell what's on the inside of a tree. Look at this one. This is white pine here. Now for some reason it looks like it's got some rot in there. I have no idea how far it'll go in there but I do know this. Whether I cut the center, whether, whether I know how to cut the center of the pith out or not at least I know enough to get lumber from around the outside, save the middle for something later. Look at this one here. This one here, the pith or the center of the tree is way off center. I don't know, let me look at the other end of that. It looks from, from this side, it should be to its left and all the way down near the bottom if it's the same on both ends. <clears throat> now check it out. There it is. And it is to the left and it's low, but it's not as bad as what it was over there. I'd say the center of this tree is probably about here. It's off about an inch. So, when you set the, the log up on your sawmill, and you measure from the ground up or from the bunk up, you can get the pith to sit in the center. But the problem with this is when the pith is offset like this tree here, you can get it in the center if you go this direction. You can turn it any way you want to and you can put the pith equal to the pith on the opposite end. But every time you make a cut, the pith moves drastically. Because when I turn that 90 degrees, where's the pith? It's not where it is now. It's gonna, it, go, it moves in a circle. And the circle is a big circle. Now, can you calculate where the pith is going to be when you're turning? Sure you can. You can look at that. I can look at that pith. It's gone sideways here to tree. Let's say I lay it down that way. And now I'm going to take and turn this 90 degrees. So when I'm looking at it, now I'm looking at the pith this way. You notice how it would be high as opposed to right or left. And then when I turn it the other way, and I'm looking at this upside down here, you can see that it's another direction. Turn it this way. It's the way it was in the beginning. I keep turning. So what I'm getting at is you can look at a tree and if, and if you're heck bent on hitting or getting the pith in one, one section of the tree, that's entirely up to you, you know. Um, let me just say that with white pine or pine or any kind of tree that they use for framing lumber, almost all, every time you buy a 2x4, you look at, the, look at it. The pith is usually in the center, but it's not hurting pine because pine has a tendency to grow into good good wood, even around even in the pith. It all depends on what the pith does. Okay, so apparently this pith somehow was attacked. I have no idea how or whatever, but it was in the center. Maybe it got something in its youth, and you know, as it grew older, it fixed itself. I don't know. I'm not a forester, but I do know that to, to, to say that I can put the pith in the center of a board, of a single board, 
I don't think that's very hard to do. All you gotta do is measure up to a certain distance, slab off from there, and certainly you can. If the board, if the log is bent though, then you're gonna have to cut a bigger board to be able to get, like say this one here. This log right here has a slight bow in the middle. Now if I cut a one inch board around the pith, and the pith's not in the center, and I have this bend in the log, what's gonna happen is, the pith is going to come out of a one inch board because it's bent more than one inch in the middle here. So if I cut a, if I'm, if I say I can always get the pith in the center of one board, I can cut a two by out of that. Or I can cut a four by four out of it and accomplish that uh, phrase that I used to say what I was going to do. But I'm not into um, the phrases that make people think that you know something. I'm into accomplishing the goal that I started out to do whether it be put the pith in the center or not now I noticed like with oak it seems as though furniture makers have a problem or some furniture makers have a problem with um, red oak having the pith in the in the furniture somewhere I don't get that because I have plenty of red oak boards with the pith running down through the center and the only reason I know it's in the center is because I can see the annual rings the, the uh, center of the tree itself grew into good red oak wood. It's not like uh, sappy. It doesn't have any rot to it. So I use it for stuff. And I've been doing it for years and years and it works fine. Have I ever found pith that I don't want? Of course, because sometimes you can buy a, um, a, a slab of wood or a board somewhere and you can split it in half over your knee lengthwise because the pith is bad. So I'm not really understanding that except for maybe the guy who was watching the video of someone else didn't really understand what he was seeing. So that's why I try to make these videos to show it's not hard to do certain things but it's impossible to do other things. There is no way whether I'm going to know that there's ants in these trees or not, these white pine. I can take a guess at this because it looks like there's probably something in there same thing with that one that's part of this tree the upper part and I can probably guess right but I have cut trees down already that look as clean as can be you go up four feet into the tree and somehow there's a whole thousand ants right there and then it ends and then you cut the rest of the tree it all depends on you know what happened who can call that there's only one person I know who can call that, and it's not me. Or anybody else on YouTube, for that matter. So anyway, I thought I'd make a comment about that, um, because I just don't think that it's a true statement. So, if I didn't say something that you feel is not right, then leave a comment, and I'll answer it. But, there we go. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't call this anything go Saturday for, for nothing. You, that video clip that you just watched uh, was responding to somebody on that left a comment. All of a sudden, one of my neighbors pulled in, and the next thing you know, I was over their place with my backhoe all afternoon digging a road in. So, it's just about getting dark, and my sweetheart and I decided that since we're all alone here, we're going to get a fire going and even though we ate supper we're still going to put hot dogs and baked potatoes on that fire as soon as it burns down a little. Right hon? Oh well, yeah. So we got skewers. Skewers? Skewers. Okay for the hot dogs. Yeah. And the potatoes are here. Sounds and good. Napkins. All right so anyway guys anything goes Saturday it turned into. <laughs> so <laughs> that's about where we are at the moment. Uh, the neighbors are a nice young couple, two nice kids. Uh, they had a bunch of roots and a dog, and they had a bunch of roots and stuff they needed dug out so they could uh, park one of their cars or, or a trailer or something. And uh, camper. I went over and did that, yeah, camper. So I dug that out, and the guy hauled the stuff away. I loaded his truck, or his little trailer that he had. So that's the end of the day already. I can't even make a good video. I was going to build a bench. That didn't happen. You did one. Yeah, I built one. They know about that one. Alright guys, so... Another one tomorrow. I hope you're uh, 
having a good Friday, uh, Saturday, what day is this, Saturday? Saturday? Yeah, I hope you're having a good Saturday night, Saturday evening, whatever you're doing, do it safely. And don't worry about this fire with this wood deck, I'm watching it like a hawk. And I'm also enjoying this. So as soon as I hang up here or shut down or end this video, I'll be making hot dogs and uh, potatoes. potatoes on the potatoes. pit there. Have a good one. Yep. Alex says hi. He's in the show. Well, guys, we had the hot dogs on there, but you see they're not there because we ate them. We're just waiting for the potatoes to get done, and then we'll eat them as well. Obviously, it has gotten dark out, and all we have is fire light there, which my honey and me are enjoying. Talking about old times, when we were kids, and all kinds of other stuff. Well, it's about 10 o'clock. All is well. Those potatoes ought to be nice and black, the skins. That's how I like them. And uh, I'll watch this fire die, and then I'm going to go in and go to get ready for bed.
you guys aren't going to believe this, but a black bear just walked by me no more than five or six feet away on the left side of me. I think it's time to go in. I can't believe it. He's over there somewhere. Turn the outside light on. I don't know if you guys can hear bullseye or not, but bullseye only barks for one thing and only one thing. And you can ask Carmine. He only barks when he smells a bear. That bear literally just, I was sitting in this chair and that freaking bear walked right by me right here. Walked right through. And he's down there somewhere. He's probably heard my voice when I said to you is what I said. Hear bullseye barking? Well, I ain't going in until the fire goes out. <laughs> well, that was an experience, number two. I'm going to put the camera here in case he comes back in. You might be able to see him walking down there. Probably wants my baked potatoes. He ain't getting them.
I'll leave my potato in the house, just in case. Bullseye has a door on his garage, or yeah, on, on the kennel in the garage that he can open and close. And right now he's cr going crazy over there because he hates bear for some reason. I don't know why, but he does. You know, when I was building this house, um, my youngest son and I built it, and uh, we used to sleep in the back of the pickup truck. I wonder how many bear walked by that truck when we were sleeping at night, because we have seen, just this year alone, 12 different black bear. And, uh, amazing. Mm-hmm. 